Hey Meredith, hey, you and the kids ever been to SeaWorld? They got, they got this incredible, cool. Every chef knows there are unbreakable rules in the kitchen, but what happens when you actually break those rules? Do the grilling gods rain ashy vengeance upon you and your family, or are they just arbitrary myths waiting to be busted? To find out, we've assembled this highly trained group of affable and stylish grill dads to put them to the test. Because this is Hello, dads. Hello. Are you Hi. ready to bust some grill myths today? I'm ready. Oh, hell yeah. Are you ready to have some frank conversations with your beautiful sons over the totem of grilling meat? Yeah. Yes, are sir. You, are you what, ready to break gender stereotypes? Always. Yeah. Always. Moms can grill too. So, first up, no more we raccoon. had a little issue. Oh, hold on, hold on. I know what you're I saying. Darn it. More raccoon org chart shifting. That's correct. So we started this company to take down Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay came out with a new production company. That's why we poached Henry B. Pennyweather. He actually came from Nickelodeon as the COO. We got him up to CEO, came with a big pay bump, huge golden parachute. He's really going to take us to the next level. You'll see Chandra Natapanda, human management, still there. She is only managing me. I have put myself at the bottom of the org chart because truth be told, we're not technically legally operating, so that way Henry B. Pennyweather goes down if anything really comes to it. You have to have an LLC before you do all this. If not, it's still the LLC. Why is there a panda on the friends? chart? What? That's Ema Pandy. He's just, just here consulting and doing some dirty work. You used to be married to Why Chandra. Why is her name not a Chandra? Just, it's not right. It's not. You can't just ask why someone's name is Chandra. All right, so first up, we're busting gas versus charcoal. This isn't like a myth per se, this is more of a preference, but I wanna find out if going through all the trouble and time of lighting charcoal is worth it, or if you got a gas grill, like maybe that's just as good. I don't know, we're gonna test some hot dogs side by side. Next up, one flip versus multiple flips. We're grilling steaks, baby. Big old juicy ribeyes yeah. for our big, beautiful, burly sons. Put some meat on their bones. A lot of people say you only flip at once. That's how you get the best steak. I don't necessarily believe that, so we're gonna test that. All right. Now, we're grilling some birds. Just dads out Woo! here grilling thick softball outdoor burgers. Yeah. We're gonna see if pressing really does get all the juice out of it, or if that's just a myth. Cause like, boy, you gotta you gotta press it. it feels so good. Then open grill versus closed grill. What happens when you close the grill? What happens when you leave it open? I all just kind of flippy floppy between the two. However, I feel like it, but we're actually going to test that side by side to get some data. Data. Dad. <laughs> what? Uncomfortably young grill dads, you ready to bust some myths? Yeah! Yes, sir. All right, all right. Write down your guesses, and uh, winner of today's episode gets to tweet whatever they want from my Twitter. Yeah, let's really? get him fired. Uh, oh, oh, no. No I'm kidding. It's Joe. Hey, Nicole. Hey. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I don't know, Josh, but we're gonna find out tomorrow on our new summer series, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. Or is it? We got an incredible new series coming out. It's five weeks long, finally trying to get to the bottom of is a hot dog a sandwich. We're talking to a historian, a philosopher, a lawyer, a business person, then we're taking the debate to the streets. To the streets. Be there or else. That was really good. Thanks, yeah, yeah we yeah. threatened him. I like to threaten yeah, 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 yeah. eyes. All right, so Nicole, we got charcoal versus propane right here. That's true. On team charcoal, you got every grilling hardo that comes into the YouTube comments and goes, it ain't a real barbecue unless it's on charcoal. And then on team propane, you got Hank Hill. And that's pretty much it. Taste the meat, not the heat, baby. We do love us some Hank Hill in the myth book. Itself. Yeah, and so charcoal, obviously, I mean, I think you're gonna get a ton more flavor from it. Agreed. But the good thing about propane is that it's super easy. You just plug in a tank, Heat it yeah. up. So to test this out, we're gonna do it just on some hot dogs. We got Hebrew National, not a sponsor, but God, do we want to beg Woo! them to be? Because I love me some Hebrew natties. That is a hot grill. That is a hot grill. So we used a chimney starter. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just gonna toss two dogs on each grill. We use a chimney starter to get the charcoal going. I'm gonna close yep. that grill just to get. Well, no, leave it, open, leave it open. Leave it open. Leave it open. Leave it open. We'll get test that later. We use basic charcoal briquettes. No lighter fluid. No quick lights. No quick lights. We used a chimney starter. Uh, look up a YouTube tutorial on how to do that. So we're just gonna flippity dippity these around until. Uh, they get nice and charred. Josh, I gotta tell it. you something. What's that? I'm not the strongest griller, but I'm excited to learn, and I'm here to learn. I grew up on janky bonfire grills, San Clemente, T Street. We'd go buy the manager special with the yellow sticker on it. We'd nice. get 
pretty much spoiled pork chops. Uh. Let's go grill them up with some pineapple and stuff at the beach. So I am a veteran griller. Didn't have a dad to really teach me how to grill. I mean, he tried his best, you know, it just didn't, just wasn't kind of in the cards for me. It's okay, uh, Josh, you can be your own dad now. <laughs> Ben's laughing at me. All right, Nicole, dogs have been grilling for about five, six minutes. We got yep. some nice char on it. Don't Beautiful use your char. hands as a grill tool. Yeah, Josh. Um, we're going to grill these buns. Get them in there. I don't like grilling my buns. I like the soft bun with the with the hot dog. Why are you looking like at me We like need that? to bust some hot dog mitts. Later, later, later. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay uh, I guess, yeah, just open your buns, start loading them in. Yeah, I guess, Josh, I have to tell you something, though. You look like an extra from Gilligan's Island. Bro, that's <laughs> a good job to have. I was probably SAG. I was probably union. Probably SAG. had a lot of financial security from being a bootleg Gilligan's Island extra. That's funny. You got any predictions on this one? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a strong believer in the flavor of charcoal. I think it does a lot of good. Man, I've gone back and forth though. I really, really love the ease of a gas grill. You don't gotta light any coals. You don't smell like coals. Like it's super convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be really nice if this was the, as good of a hot dog as that one for I know. me. Cause then I don't have to go through the trouble. Right on. Do you want to load up your own dog the way you want? I'm gonna go bear first. I'm gonna okay, go bear okay, first. Good and idea. Taste condiments. Okay, I'm gonna do. Let's gas. go gas first. Let's go gas first. Cheers. Mmm. Oh. So good. Oh. Delicious, regular hot dog. Charcoal. No, <laughs> don't break my bun. Different sensation. Yeah. I want to test this on hot dogs because they're not staying on there that long, right? So yeah. it's like how much charcoal flavor could even like imbue in there? It is delicious. A lot. Like the hot dogs that we put on the gas grill, I don't think you could tell the difference between that and something that was cooked on a flat top. Totally. So like if you're grilling for my money, I don't even I don't even know if I see the point of a gas grill. Like I know you're getting different It's easier. Cookery. We can agree that it's easier. It's easier, but so is putting a pan on a stove, man. What, you're just gonna be outside for being outside? I'll take a burner outside with a cast iron and cook hot dogs for people. I know, but you know, Dang. just I, I think that it's easy, it's accessible, but if you can, and if you have the ability to do, Charcoal all the way. Charcoal, easy winner. This was almost a formality, but we had to see. Mm -hmm. So we got to get the information to V and Trevor right now. I have an idea. What's that? Baby, there's a price to pay. I'm a weenie in a bottle. You got to eat me the right way. I almost cringed so hard that I threw up. Trevor, I Woo! found this uh, wiener in a jar. Yeah, what does it say on there? It says charcoal. Well, that makes sense because we got a charcoal grill right here. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, we're testing to see if one flip or multiple flips is better. And the idea is that if you flip it multiple times, people say that you're gonna lose some of the juices. And you know, I don't know about all that. Uh, I tend to be a one flip man myself because you know what? It just is a lot less work to flip it one time. Uh, but you know, we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see, we got two identical steaks here. V's gonna flip hers one time, about four minutes. I'm gonna flip mine every 60 seconds and we're gonna cook until 127. Okay. And then we're gonna pull them off. We got these handy dandy thermometers here. Okay. Um, so if you wanna pepper up those steaks and we can get them on these thermometers here, we can get them on the grill. I'm ready, Daddy Trevor. Sorry for talking like this. I just can't help myself. Oh, there is no pepper in here. What's this screw for? Oh, oh you know what? Not that's not gonna be the one. That's good stuff. I mean, you pop that right off. That's good. Now you dump them in. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, Daddy Trey, we got these steaks ready. All right, which one do you want? Because you're going to want to stick a thermometer in there. I'm going to put this one on your side first. Well, well hold on. I got to grab it by the hand. What? <laughs> well, because you got to get the thermometer in there. I was trying to help you out. All right, and you want to get all the way in there right into the right into the center of the meat so we know the right temperature. Okay, hold on. I got to do my side now. Why all is right. This so okay I'm just going to hang on to this steak here. We got to put them on at the exact same time. Okay, hold on. So that the timer works out, because I'm going to tell you when to flip. I'm ready. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, I'm popping it on. All Ooh. right, and the timer started. Got raw meat juice on my hand. All right, 60 seconds. I'm going for my first go, flip. Go, 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 go. Woo! Yee! Yeah. All right, got some nice grill marks there. Oh, yeah, that looks beautiful. Got a good little start of a sear going there. Yeah. Fat's rendering. It's looking good. I'm sweating. Hey, you. Got a steak in my eye. It's time to do our one flip, Trevor. Cause it's Cause you want to make sure the thermometer is in the brunt of the meat. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good temperature reading on it. Ooh, if it's in a little that. fat pocket, it might get too high too fast. Which is what I did. Don't do that. I'm going to give mine one more flip, but mine's looking about ready. Yours is going to need cut another couple more minutes because yep. it was off the grill for a second. Yeah, we're at 104. We're doing good. Oh, Ooh, that looks I got nice. a nice healthy sear on this. Uh-huh. All right, we're going to wait for these to get up to 127. We're going to pull them. We're going to eat them. All right, so before we get into tasting our steaks, we want to let you guys know that GME Good Mythical Evening is back and it's going to be crazier than last year. Yeah. 
It's going to be big. It's happening Thursday, September 1st. Uh, kick off your Labor Day weekend. Right. Am I right? Come on. Some grilling, some GME. Uh, you can get your tickets as early as this Wednesday, though, if you're a Mythical Society second or third degree member. So go check that out, mythicalsociety.com. It's going to be crazy. Um, now here, we got these steaks and we've been letting them rest a little bit. And what we're looking for here is the evenness of the cook. So we want to, I think we're going to go cut right in the middle and see what we got as far as a cook on the steak. Okay. And then obviously juiciness and flavor. Um, so why don't you cut into that one and we cut into this one and then we can compare before we taste up. This is looking juicy. Oh, very juicy. So I'm cutting right into the brunt of the meat here. Oh, you want to put your slice up so we yeah, can compare? Yeah, yeah. So let's see. It looks like we got, I mean, they look pretty similar here. Yeah, you can. Got a little this bit of look, a gray ring. Yeah, little this one looks pink. a little more juicier. Well, it's hard to yeah, see. Yeah, because it have a look doesn't at that really one. have that like ring around the edge. I think like, this one's got a little bit more of a ring than yeah. this one though, than the multiple flips. So let's see. Which one do you want to taste first? Uh, Let's do the multiple. All right, let's taste multiple flips. Yeah, you cut yourself off a little piece. Thank you. I'll tell Thank you what, you. that fat is going to be so beautifully rendered though. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow. That's good steak. That is a juicy bite of meat. I might go a little bit more rare because that's just the kind of guy I am. Oh, but that's no, a great that's steak. Like, that's perfect for me. And we're going into the one flip here. So we're just seeing, you know, if this one's a little bit more juicy. It held. Got some juice. Oh. Really I think good. the cook on the one flip might just be a little bit more tender. Yeah. Because this one, you get a little bit more chew to it, a little bit more bite to it mm -hmm. with the multiple flips. And maybe it is a little bit less juicy. I think we're going to go with one flip. One flip. And I tell you what, that's good for me because <laughs> it's less work, right? Right. <laughs> less work staying over a grill, more time for drinking Bud Light. Am I right? Come on now. How are we going to let Josh and Nicole know? Okay, we got to leave a note on the car since we're in the parking lot. Yeah, let's leave a nice encouraging note on the car. Yo, what you got there? I found a note on my car. What does it say? It says, learn to park, jackass. Oh, oh it says one flip on the back. Oh, I nice. really do struggle with parking. We are pressing versus not pressing our burgers. Every mm -hmm. good grill dad knows that the instinct when you put a burger on, especially when you flip the burger, stick spatula and go, Psst. That's right. That's how I know that the grill dad is grilling away. And that's how you know the grill's working. It's when you press it down, you hear the sizzle. But a lot of people say that that's going to get all the juices to release out of the burger, mm -hmm. and you should never press your meat. Houndstever. Houndstever. Houndstever smash burgers are all the rage right that's now. Right. I got a feeling that when you smash it in there, you might get a good sear on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to find out the right way to do this. That's right. So we got 80, 20, 8 ounce burgers. We lubed up with a little bit of all, and then salt and pepper. We're going to pop them right in the middle of this rip. In the middle, grill. can you do yours? Can you do one? Yeah, yeah, here. Okay, okay ready? Yeah. One, two, three. There we go. Pull off the paper, it's hot. Oh, I'll get do in it. there, Nicole. I'll get Thank in you. there. All right, you want to salt and pepper the other side? I would love to. Let me actually oil salt and pepper the other side. Oh, I'm downwind. Oh, I'm downwind. I'm just sweating. Oh, my God. I'm just sweating. Just so much nudity. I'm like the single grill dad who joined CrossFit three months ago and shows up to the barbecue trying to impress the widows. You're engaged, freak. What, what do you mean, freak? Stop pretending There's nothing like wrong. You're they can love again. After a husband <laughs> dies, you can't love oh, the widows. Oh, the widows. The widows of the barbecue. All right, wait, let me press one down. Well, Josh, if you're going to take your shirt off, I want to reveal part of my shirt. Are those your only kids? Cute. Josh, do you get it? It says Ben drinking. <laughs> it says Ben drinking. Ben, ben drinking ruins yeah, the pun. Ben drinking, like Ben Franklin. Nicole comes up to me and goes, did you know that Ben Franklin wasn't a president? That's crazy. Been. And I'm he like, should have been. What do you mean he should have been? He should have been a he president. Old. He was old as hell, man. For everyone was old. Yeah, kite, flying kites would have been his whole thing. What, what do you mean? What, oh, that. All Americans can fly kites with a little key on them during lightning storms. That would have been great. I would have voted for that guy. He invented bifocals. He did? And, and like a stovetop oven. What? Ben Franklin did a lot of, oh, poor Richard's alma. I took a class about Ben Franklin in college. Well, wow, I can take tell. learning seriously. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let these uh, buddies go for like a couple minutes. I'm gonna keep nice. just patting this burger down. All right. All right. Let's get them flipped. Split these burgs. Yeah, now give it a nice press down. Wow. Those juices out. That's good. This one obviously is getting a little bit flatter, getting a, a little bit more char on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, you know, as, as the grill keeps going on, you're getting a little drunk or you start telling weird stories. Yeah, remember that one time you and your mom went to the Pocono? <laughs> me and my mom? <laughs> no, me. Yo, you and my I'm mom. sorry, I'm a few cores deep. You wanna pop the cheese on? Yeah, of course, I'd love to. I'm gonna give this more pats. We're not gonna try and go like super rare in these burgers or anything. Uh, I say you should cook around, oh, oh I'm getting, oh, I'm getting in my eyes. I say you should cook burgers all the way up to 160 degrees. Uh, that's the FDA, bro. Just slap the cheese on there, I don't care anymore. It's too hot. It's so, Jesus, it's so it's hot. It's so hot, the cheese just uh, turned into non-Newtonian fluid. Oh God, I rubbed Diet Coke all over my body so it tans in brown. <laughs> the caramel coloring, oh my God. All right, should we get these, uh, a couple, another a minute, couple another more minute, minutes. another minute, another minute. Should we toast our buns too? Yeah, yeah, toast up the buns. Put the buns on there, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're just man at this point. 
You rooting for a sports kid or a theater kid? <laughs> what do you think? Well, David is rooting for a sports kid. I'm rooting for a theater kid. So we're going to do like a combination. So my kid's going to be a fencer and really good at musicals. You think fencer qualifies as like sports kid? It, it's it's an Olympic sport. No, that's an indoor kid. Fencers are indoor kids. They're indoor kids. My kid's going to be like... To. You know? And your kid's gonna be like, I'm stupid. I'm gonna be stoked on a musical theater kid, but I'm gonna treat their performances as if they were sports. I'm That's gonna bring so... a cooler full of Coors Banquets. That is so I'm gonna show negative. up there, and they're gonna deliver a beautiful soliloquy and be like, nice job, Aria, it's good stuff. Aria? That's a cute name. Yeah, gender agnostic. All right, should we pull these? Let's pull these. I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, this, this is gonna, this shirt's it's just so gonna, this shirt's just a tangle. It's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can't afford another burger. I got it, I got it here. The pressing burger's there. Nicole, load it up with special <laughs> sauce. No, you gotta be forceful. Josh, I'm sensitive. All right. Woo. Special sauce? Yeah, load up some special sauce and pickles. Hey, Meredith, hey, you and the kids ever been to SeaWorld? They got, they got this incredible, Nicole, I was making moves. I don't have time for that. Slice these burgers in half. Ooh, that felt so good. Doesn't it feel nice? Yeah, yeah. Cold showers, man. More for just alleviating. Never mind. You always think about Meredith. <laughs> okay. Meredith's a nice lady. All right, so here we got the not pressed one. You're seeing a fair amount of juice. It's a little bit thicker because we didn't press it down. Mm -hmm. Then the pressed one, you're seeing that extra char coming off, Yeah, right? it's insane. There's so much more char. There's more color. It's that smash burger crust that we almost got on it. It's incredible. Well, let's see what it feels like in the taste. What should we try first? Not pressing? Let's go not pressed. Okay. Mm. Oh my God, it's so juicy. That's a good ass burger. It's a good ass burger, I'll tell you what. Mm. Now we try I feel like one. I already know which one I'm gonna like. Well, let's let's just do it We're for the sake it. of science. Mm. Mm. It's close and they're two different experiences. I'm feeling a lot more flavor, char, yumminess from the pressed. This is going to come down to preference because they are such different experiences. Mm -hmm. So with the one that we didn't press, there is more juice in that. Like, For sure, it I is a juicier burger. Yeah. I don't think this myth is busted. I think that's real and it makes sense, right? You're physically pressing the juices mm -hmm. out. However, if you are using a fatty enough beef, yep. which you should be if you're making a burger go all in, yep. For my money, the pressing gets you more flavor like a smash burger. Absolutely, it is. It's a better burger experience altogether. Pick a card, any card. Uh, my hands are, my, my hands Any are too, card! My hands are too greasy! Okay, let's let them know. Eight of diamonds, very nice. The hell is this bit? I hate close-up magic so much. They're just liars. They're just lying to you and you're What if Meredith's them. son liked ma magic? Would you care then? I mean, you know, I can learn a couple tricks. First off, I'd just like to apologize. I've been told that I've been making some of the fine ladies of this year barbecue uncomfortable. And also Meredith's husband, Terry, is not dead. Uh, he, was, he was just over by the pool. So. Did, you, did you pay your pants? Yeah, I got excited. V, yeah. please look into your fanny pack. I have a fanny pack, yes. It says pressing on this card. Is this your card? Well, you press your burgers, eh? It's just that Terry, Terry rides a motorcycle and I heard that he got into, got into one, so I, was, I wasn't hoping, but. So we got pork chops here. We got some extra thick pork chops. Love grilling some pork chops. We're testing open grill versus closed grill. A lot of people say they don't know when to open it or when to keep it closed. Mm -hmm. I've always operated, if I want a harder sear, leave it open because then you're not tenting it like an oven when you want something to really cook mm. for a long time, close it and that'll insulate the heat. But I also got the theory that you're gonna get a harder sear with a closed grill because it's hotter. Let's find out. So we're going to open this grill. We're gonna cook these thick pork chops. Grill's oh. got the same amount of coals. Both are at the same temperature, run about 650 degrees right here. And then we're gonna season the pork chops with salt and pepper. Just salt and pepper? Yeah, I salt and pepper. Tony C. We, oh yeah, Tony C's. We gotta put the Tony Sachery's greatest Cajun oh, seasoning no, in the game. Oh no, we're gonna choke and die. Oh, yeah, no. well wait, wait, Tony Sachery's gonna burn on the grill. Yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Just and a little dust. We're I gonna lacquer them at the end with some maple syrup, Dijon mustard, and cider vinegar. Just, uh, if you're grilling a pork chop, lacquer it, man. Come on, do a good pork chop lacquer. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take one and I'm gonna pop it down on the open grill. Somebody wanna grab the other one? And so what we're testing for here, we're gonna test for sear versus internal doneness. We're gonna cook these to 147 degrees, get about 153 to 155 on the finished cook, and we're gonna time it to see what's quicker, what gets you the better sear. You ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Season side down. Oh, shit. Dude, sweet. wait, oh, you only season one side? Yes. Season side down. Oh, crap. Oh, I got the thermometer in there. Dude, we're fucking I ain't touching that. Oh God, my God, thanks. this place is a Everything's out. falling apart. Listen, oh, man, it's the we'll end of the day. Oh, dang it. No, Close no, the dang oh. grill. You're hot. You just been Woo. rejected by three to five widows, and you're 16 banquets deep, and you're just living, man. What did you say? I don't advocate for drinking in excess. We're gonna let these go. Uh, we're gonna monitor that to make sure we don't have any flare-ups, but check back in about six to eight minutes, and we're gonna flip. 
All right, pork chops have been going for about five minutes. We're rocking about what? We got 97 on here. What are you at? About a 105, 106. So that is cooking quicker. Let's flip it. Let's look at the sear. I'm going to lacquer it. All right. I'm going to open this bad boy up. God dang it. Pork chop. All right, you give me a flip. Get a lot of that lacquer on there. We got some nice sugar in this lacquer. Lacquer, 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 man. All right, well, let's look at the sears on these. I mean, they're looking kind of the got a little bit of a char. I might move it over to a little bit less of a hot spot here. Is that okay with you? Yeah, so when you close the lid, as long as you leave the vents open, right? Oxygen feeds fire, so you're gonna get airflow through there, and you might get some flare-ups when you close it that you wouldn't get when you don't close it. But that said, this is a pork chop. We're cooking it all the way to like 140, 147. And so I, I like you might just want it closed all the time. We'll, we'll see where these end up at. Right now, they're looking pretty equivalent. Well, hi, dang, Nicole, I'll tell you what the pork chop right here. Dang, it's even done, man. Yeah, wait, weirdly, the open grill, uh, the pork chop is done. We're at 147 degrees, right? The F now in that one. Trevor, what you rocking? We're at 139 right now. Do you think it's because there's maybe more oxygen getting to the coals? Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. when you're grilling outside, you're gonna have a lot of different factors. So like right now, that being closed, it's a somewhat windy day here in Burbank. You got the hot air from the Burbank airport just blowing jet streams at you. Uh, we might've just gotten a hotter environment and likely a better sear, but that one looked seared pretty well too. Yeah. I'm pretty shocked at how equivalent these are, but Nicole, pull that pork chop. Okay. Pull, pull that chop. What pull are we pulling these out again? Chop. 147. All right, 146, 147. All right, yeah. pull it, pull it, pull it. All right. See if we can see any difference. Flip it over, flip it over. Let's see, let's see the thing on the other side too. These are identical, okay, these are like identical thickness pork yep. chops, identical weight. This is an identical sear on them. This one reached temperature probably about what? 90 seconds before that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got damn near identical cooks opening or closing, but we haven't tasted them yet, but like, can't imagine there's much of a difference. All right, so these have both been resting. Uh, open grill versus closed grill. Closed grill actually cooked about 90 seconds slower, which to me, that kind of busts the myth that you close your grill when you want something to cook faster because it, quote, turns it into an oven. We got an identical sear on it too, which I'm really shocked because I thought the closed grill was going to get more. So that said, I mean, they're pretty dead ass even. I suppose you would close your grill if you're cooking something like chicken that you're smoking for a long time. Obviously, if you're doing true barbecue, going low and slow, you want to close that lid to get the smoke in there. But I don't know. Let's cut into them. See if we see if we can find something out. They both ended up at the exact same 155 temp after the carryover cooking, after the rest. Which right? one do you want to try first? I'm going to cut four pieces out of this. God, I just want to get closer to the meat. I know, man. Feel so far away. You know what the Don't best bite of food meat. I had today was? The hot dog. <laughs> my favorite, like Mitt Romney, my favorite meat is hot dog. Well, so That's a bad reference. Meat Romney. That's the only Everybody thing I like Everybody grab Mitt Romney a fork. In. Let's try open grill first. Like Mitt Romney, Forks devout one. Okay, Josh, don't need no fork. No, no, what do you mean fork, dude? Wait, that juice looks good. Aw. Hot dang. Let's try the shows that lacquer. Wow. Really good lacquer. <laughs> That's a I great know. lacquer. We might have been bugging about the lacquer, but that's, that's a juicy good. pork chop, though. This really sear is great. The lacquer that's ain't lacking. I got no complaints Try about the pork chop. The lacquer ain't lacking. Dip in the juice? Yeah, dip in the juice. Mmm. <laughs> You're so similar. That's the same pork chop. That's identical. We could not have cooked two identical pork chops on the same grill. Nope. Somehow we did it on two different grills. Um, That leads me to believe that, like, it's a myth that you close the grill to make something cook faster. I mean, again, you're working with a lot of variables when you're cooking outside, but if you are in the Burbank wind conditions, yep. leave your grill open, man. I mean, or close it. It doesn't matter as it turns out. I will say this, they do taste incredibly similar. There is a little bit more juice in the open grill one. Right. A little bit more juice. Yeah. But borderline, the same pork chop. If I were to go to a restaurant and I ate both of them side by side, I'd be like, that's the same. Look at us, we're restaurant cooking, man. We're replicating the same dish over and over. Here's the thing, you open your grill, that's more time to admire the meat. I agree with that, you just what is the meat. What is this accent? You look cool. <laughs> What do you mean, what's this accent? Nicole, there's a grill dad accent. You come out there, you grill? I'm Texas. Oh, Mine is like now. this. I'm right from Alpharetta this Garden. This is my grill dad I'm accent. I'm not even talking different. <laughs> this is Wait, me. I don't even have an accent. <laughs> this is my grill dad. You get the kebab. That's my dad. Next week, we're busting kebab myths with Nicole and her whole family. Yeah. Oh my God, so fun. I'm That'd so be fun. great. All right. Morris? Morris is coming in? Morris, Morris? Shala, Sanam, Salar, Kion. Daddies. Yeah. Yes. yes, that's me. To go over, we found out that charcoal really is worth the time and effort setting up. You're out here grilling. You might as well get the most taste on your food. Gas grills, I guess they're fine, but really charcoal brings the flavor. We also found out my idiot brain thought that multiple flips would cook a steak more evenly. Turns out one flip really does keep it juicier against all odds. Found out, not pressing burgers does make them juicier. However, you're gonna get a better cook on it if you do press it and you get that extra sear in there. And then we found out open grill versus closed grill. 
Who cares, man? Who cares? It does not matter. Who cares? Do whatever you want. Read the wind. Drop some grass like a... Uh, uh, no, the weird reference, Josh? I was trying to think of a golfer, but I found jump? out... No, who's a golfer? They dropped the grass. Oh, Tiger, uh, Ricky, Tiger Woods. Ricky Soxwoods. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't exist. Daddies! Yeah. Yep. Let's figure yeah. out who gets to tweet whatever they want from my account, but something that won't get me fired. Trevor, what'd you guess? Uh, howdy, y'all. My name's Trevor, and I guess charcoal, one flip, pressing, and open grill. And this is just a cool guy with sunglasses. And always remember, save a horse, ride a cowboy. Well, I reckon I got three out of four here, because I guessed all the first three right, and then open grill, I said, but that's one don't matter, so well, I guess I got three. Yeah. Plus one. Nicole! Hi! What'd you guess? Hi, I'm Daddy Nicole, and we got Cole, multi, squashed, and closed. XOXO, Daddy Nicole. I guessed two out of four. What you gonna do? Pretty bad. It's not that bad. V. What'd you guess? This is a girl dad, basketball dad, Tyrone of the dads. My prediction is charcoal, multiple flips, pressing, and open grill. I got two. Josh, what'd you get? I'm guessing charcoal, multiple, press, closed, and like they say, save a horse, ride a divorcee father, just trying his best. I also got two. I flubbed the multiple versus one flip. I was pretty sure on that. That makes Trevor the winner. Woo! Hell yeah. Woo! But the real winners are all the people that tune in to Nicole and I's podcast tomorrow, deciding whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich for the final time. It's really incredible. We put a ton of work into this. We got some awesome guests. It's going to be wild. Check it out. Go listen. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, y'all. What happened when Mary Magdalene tracked dirt in the house? What? What? Jesus, Jesus swept. swept. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Thank y'all for stopping by. We've got a new episode today. We've got a new episode of the podcast. I'll talk to you soon. Everyone, check out your podcast. There's stuff on Instagram and TikTok. I'm going to keep you in pictures. Y'all, I'm going to go to old man on a hatchet dream from <laughs> I'll see y'all next time. <clears throat> oh, what the hell are you saying? What was that? <laughs> What'd you say? I don't know. I blacked out for the last 30 seconds. What happened? You're too hot to handle, and so is your bakeware. Get a Mythical Kitchen Oven Mitt available now at mythical.com.